Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we have faced for so long now, and that affects every aspect of our lives and has us in the situation that we presently find ourselves, where relationships don't hold together, where trusting is very difficult, where finding genuine love, positive regard is more difficult than ever. And last week, I introduced a new series having to do with how good some folks are at the art of what we call positive impression management. There are those individuals who have a way about them, a way of being amiable, likable. Maybe they have good connective skill. Those skills alone don't make for good character. And there are individuals who know they have those skills. There are also individuals who, um, in a fairly haughty way, not only know that they have those skills, but are enamored of the fact that they have those skills and know how to use them. They're happy to claim what has become their ability to sway and to worm their way into the hearts of others, even though they may not truly merit the regard of others. Some of these folks are so good at the art of impression management that they will bowl you over, sweep you off your feet sometimes. But then as time goes on and their character becomes more plainly revealed, it's inevitable that you feel hurt and betrayed. And when that happens, many times you want others to know who this person really is. I can't tell you how many times individuals have called me or written me or emailed me to say that their experience in therapy and their experience with family and friends has been extraordinarily painful because nobody seemed to see what they had come to see and that nobody seemed to have basically gotten the number of the person that they had finally come to know in character, much to their dismay. They wanted the whole world to know who this person really is and what this person had really done to them, how deeply they had hurt them, what they're really capable of. And that's very understandable. So it's also understandable that they weren't very pleased at first with the advice that I usually give. You see, inner peace can only be restored. Happiness can only be found when we invest our time and our energy where we have power. Once you see who a person really is in character, and once you've come to appreciate the toxicity that they have brought into your life, it's your obligation not so much to broadcast the news to make other people aware of what you've become aware. What's more important is that you take care of yourself, that you heed a lesson well and difficultly learned, and that you make a solemn pledge to yourself to do your best to not fall into the same traps again. This is what it is to love yourself, which, by the way, in some faith traditions, we regard as a command, not a suggestion, and that I write about in my latest book, Essentials for the Journey. It's imperative. It's not just a mere good idea. It's an imperative that you love yourself. It's also imperative that you put your time and your energy and your focus where you have power, because to do otherwise is to embark upon the road 
to the kind of learned helplessness that results in the most common kind of depression. I realized this early in my work, that there is a behavioral formula for most depressions. I'm not talking about depressions that have their roots, the rare depressions that have their roots strictly in a biochemistry gone awry. That can happen. It does happen. But more often, more often, as hard as it is to believe, people unwittingly depress themselves by continuing to chase after, to yearn for, to put time, energy, and attention toward something they haven't the power to make happen. And that only leads to frustration, anger that's eventually turned inward, a sense of futility, and depression. The formula for joy is the opposite. The formula for inner peace, harmony, joy, vibrancy, life, is putting your time and energy and attention on what you can control, which is basically how you operate in this world. And that will either be lovingly or unlovingly. And you have to be willing to pay the price of that. If loving were easy, everyone would do it. It's not easy. Forging solid character is the task of a lifetime. And good impression managers never really have to face the pressure of forging better character because their impression management techniques and their skills at being amiable and likable, et cetera, et cetera, work for them. So there's no incentive for them to change course, to grow, to modify their ways. It all appears to work. And it does not do a toxic relationship survivor any good whatsoever to try to play the game of exposure. Eventually, these folks always expose themselves, eventually. And those that they exploit or use in some way will always feel the just consequences of their naivety. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it makes perfect sense that someone who has been taken advantage of, who was played, so to speak, wants to tell the world what they have come to realize, especially about the covert characters that I describe in my books, Character Disturbance, and especially in In Sheep's Clothing. The first book of its kind to expose such characters. It's natural to want to tell everybody who the person you've come to realize is a nefarious character, who that person really is. It's natural to want to expose. But frankly, and even though it's not attractive to hear, it's a waste of your time and energy. Time and energy better spent loving yourself and letting the toxicity that once infected your life go. Good riddance. Let others learn their own lessons. Live and let live. Love and only accept love, not toxicity, in the future. Regard it as a command, not a suggestion. It's freeing. It's life-giving. A mound of experience 
has demonstrated that to me quite clearly. We only need heed that one powerful axiom. And for most of us, it takes a lifetime to figure out how to best love ourselves. But until we can, we have no clue how to best love another, how to truly love another. In previous series and on many articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com, I talk about all the different sentiments and behaviors that masquerade as love. Love truly is the answer, but we can be fooled by all the things that look like it, but aren't. Just as we can fool ourselves about all the things that we can bring in our lives that seem like we're loving ourselves, when in fact we may be unhealthily indulging ourselves, even fooling ourselves. Awakening to the reality of love and the power of love is really the beginning of solid character. And then cultivating the will to settle for nothing less is the pathway to real character growth. It's how we best love ourselves and how we prepare ourselves to properly love another. And I'll have more to say about that as this series continues. And I'll have more to say about all the unhealthy temptations that we have that make recovery from a toxic, covert character difficult. So until next time, I'm Dr. George Simon. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please avail yourself of the hundreds of articles available free at drgeorgesimon.com. You see the URL at the top of the screen. And all my books, In Sheep's Clothing, Character Disturbance, How Did We End Up Here?, the Judas Syndrome, and especially my latest and dearest offering, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, Proven Principles, Time-Tested Principles for a Psychologically Healthy and Spiritually Rich Life. Till next time, I'm Dr. George Simon. Take care.